Have you ever come up with something really amazing, but no one seems to think you can pull it off? You're not alone. Inventors throughout history have been written off and mocked for their ideas. Today, we've compiled a handful of the most bizarre and fascinating ideas. Here are 20 lost inventions that could have changed the world. Number 20. The Stanley Meyer water fuel cell is an intriguing invention that ultimately proved to be too good to be true. The inventor tried to develop a technology that could power vehicles using water instead of fuel. If this had been successful, you can only imagine how different the world would be now. In any case, the water fuel cell was a component of a design for an eternal motion machine, which we'll look at in more detail later. In this instance, it would be created by American inventor Stanley Meyer, who asserted that the system would separate water back into its constituent elements, hydrogen and oxygen. Despite a lot of anticipation surrounding this purported invention in the early 1990s, it was eventually shown to have been a fraudulent claim. It was said that if the thing had worked, it would have actually violated the first and second laws of thermodynamics, so that's unfortunate. Number 19. Discovered in Iran in 2015, this find was made during construction work. It was an ancient aqueduct that included an incredibly intelligent water distribution system. An aqueduct is simply a man-made channel used to transport water from one place to another. These are frequently found in the form of bridges that cross ravines or gaps. These ancient technologies were developed in the Roman Empire and were crucial to the development of civilization. The find in Iran included some incredibly clever stuff. In addition to carrying water, this aqueduct appears to have cleaned and purified it using a series of pottery crocks, which are thought to have functioned as a means of removing mud from the water, although the discovery is known to be from ancient times. The cultural heritage organization in charge of the system was hesitant to provide a more precise date for the aqueduct, and they were unsure of whether the entire thing would be preserved in place or if the pieces would be moved and could serve somewhere else. This dilemma was undoubtedly caused by the potential loss of revenue that would result from stopping a major construction project due to some ancient pipes. Number 18. Next on our list of interesting inventions is a work of art made by a man well known for a variety of oddball and occasionally problematic endeavors. Wright claimed that his creation, the Cloud Buster, would be able to capture the low-level, invisible impacts of subtle energy present in our environment. The concept behind the Cloud Buster, though it is debatable whether they exist at all in many cases, was that it would use a subtle energy and, when directed towards a cloud in the sky, that energy charge would cause the cloud surface tension to dissipate, causing the cloud to evaporate. It was all rather janky and strange, and has been recorded in history alongside Reich as a bit of a bizarre. Number 17. The Chronovisor, an invention that sounds more like a folktale than anything else, is said to have been created by a Benedictine monk named Father Pellegrino Ornetti. He kept the device a secret until the early 1960s, when he revealed its existence to a Vatican priest by the name of Father Francois Brunei. The Chronovisor was supposed to be a unique device that allowed the user to see through time. If this were a real, legitimate invention, it would seem to be making a ton of money by now. The gadget is supposed to have been developed using antenna cathode rays and various metals that all accept light and sound signals across wavelengths. He claimed to have received the help of 12 scientists, one of them was a Nazi. The scientists said that, conveniently for the Vatican, they would use the chronovisor to observe and record historical events, including the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It should be noted that by looking into their visual time machine, they had thus verified all of the Bible's teachings. It sounds kind of delusional, but they still went ahead and published what they claimed was a picture of Jesus being crucified, despite the fact that it closely resembles a painting depicting the same scene. In fact, as many people have since discovered, it is actually a cheap reproduction of a statue from a church in Umbria, Italy. Number 16. The United States saw the release of a fat-free version of Pringles in 1996, and everyone who wanted to gorge on unhealthy snacks without worrying about gaining weight thought this was the solution to their problems. However, it quickly turned out to be less enjoyable than anyone had anticipated. Alestra, a synthetic fat molecule, was the basis for this fat-free claim. It was created by Procter and Gamble, more accidentally while researching the effects of various fats on young children. It was discovered that this synthetic substance caused fatty acids to bond with sorbitol, a type of sugar alcohol, to form a molecule so large that it could not be absorbed by the intestines, effectively rendering it indigestible. 
Therefore, after discovering a way to make food that tasted and felt like fat but wouldn't be absorbed by the body like fat, the researchers made some more tweaks to make it nice and inexpensive to produce. At that point, it was announced to the world as a miracle fatty food that wouldn't cause weight gain and contain no fat, calories, or cholesterol. However, you know what happens when something seems too good to be true. This fat replacement was quickly used to make potato chips, pretzels, and other salty snacks. The US FDA approved it somewhat mysteriously, and problems quickly surfaced. It turned out that Alestra actually interfered with the body's ability to absorb other things, including vitamins, which were suddenly unavailable. In an attempt to address the issue, more vitamins were added to the foods. The problem is that, in addition to being impossible for the intestines to absorb, those large molecules also pass through the consumer's digestive tract very fast, which would have some unpleasant side effects. Sales of the so-called miracle product quickly declined, but the bizarre thing is that it is still used in a few products today and is still legal in the United States despite being banned in most other countries. Number 15. American-Serbian inventor Nikola Tesla was born in 1856 and died in 1943. While Thomas Edison is frequently credited with the discovery of electricity, his work was really plagued with failure. He would be best remembered for his remarkable contributions to the construction of our modern electrical infrastructure. In the 19th century, Nikola Tesla was working on using radio frequency for electrical transmission. He used two coils to generate high voltage and high frequency currents, and these used a near field inductive and capacitive coupling to transmit the power between two networks. It was Tesla who invented AC currents and the dependable and safer systems that we based all modern electrical conduction on. Tesla's research on long distance transmission was not successful, but he demonstrated wireless power by using incandescent bulbs in a specific proximity to the coil to show how they could be lit up despite the lack of connected wiring. Tesla clearly understood the potential for wireless use and predicted how it would work for the internet and cell phones in our modern times. Number 14. The Romans were known for their powerful and highly advanced civilization. They made numerous scientific discoveries and clever inventions that continue to benefit us today. One such discovery is the herb known as silphium, which is native to North Africa. It was once a wildly popular plant in the Greek city of Cyrene, which is now in Libya on Africa's northern coast. The herb stalks were used for centuries to make a kind of resin that was utilized locally. The Romans used it for a variety of illnesses, such as fever, nausea, and corns on the feet, but what they used it for was an incredibly effective form of birth control. According to Roman physician Serenus, taking a small amount once a month would induce menstruation in women and prevent pregnancy. It also became extremely popular as a herbal remedy, which led to a massive economic boom for the town of Cyrene. However, in the end, demand would outweigh supply, and the plant was virtually wiped out due to overharvesting. It is thought to have become extinct by the end of the first century AD. Number 13. Back in 1990, Maurice Ward, a British hairdresser turned amateur chemist, created a strange sticky substance he called Starlight. This bizarre substance had amazing heat-resistant properties, and he demonstrated it on the BBC television series Tomorrow's World by coating a raw egg in it and then blasting the entire thing with a blowtorch. The demonstration attracted a lot of interest because, at the time, we didn't have the internet or more than four television channels, so we were easily entertained and amazed by such futuristic marvels. Many different people were interested in testing it out for applications ranging from heat shields on spacecraft to fire protection on skyscrapers. Scientists in the UK and the US conducted tests, which verified that the substance was as heat resistant as Ward had claimed. However, despite the interest, Ward was unable to reach an agreement with any of the interested parties, and in the end, the US company Thermal Shield claimed to have acquired the rights in 2013. As of right now, no product made from this mysterious substance is available. Number 12. There have been tales about flexible or unbreakable glass known as vitriol flex seals since ancient Rome. The first mention of the material comes from Emperor Tiberius Caesar, who ruled from 14 to 37 AD. It is said that an unidentified inventor brought the emperor a drinking bowl made of this flexible glass, and Caesar threw the bowl on the ground. According to stories told of it, the glass did not break or shatter like regular glass, instead, it was just dented. The story continued by saying that the emperor asked the glassmaker if anyone else knew how to make it. The glassmaker replied that no, and the emperor then mysteriously had him executed. 
However, there don't seem to be any known examples of this flexible glass, and no one knows how it was made. Number 11. The carburetor made by Tom Obel was an American inventor who, if his creation had been applied instead of the mess we seem to have made of ourselves, may have truly transformed the world. This is an amazing feat by any standards, and we can only speculate about how different the world might have been today if cars had been equipped with such effective devices. Just consider how much less pollution there might have been if Tom Ogle had invented a replacement for the carburetor and fuel pump in his own 1974 Galaxy. Tom Ogle discovered this in the late 1970s while fiddling with a lawnmower engine. At the time, he was just 21 years old. He created a black box filter, which he then put to his automobile, which weighed 4,000 pounds and guzzled gas like it was going out of style. This straightforward device was proven to be incredibly efficient through extensive testing, and he claimed that it could have changed the way that gasoline was used and possibly changed the world if it had been added to modern lightweight cars, which could now get up to 400 to 900 miles per gallon. Things got a little heated when Tom Ogle's invention supporters all wanted a controlling interest in the young man's trademark. Ogle opened his own car center to modify vehicles with the device, but then the corporation started to get unpleasant. Scientists confirmed the effectiveness of the unit, and Ogle was also investigated by the U.S. government and corporate engineers. One corporation said that they were creating their own version so Ogle wouldn't receive any royalties. He then started to go downhill and was shot in the street in 1981, but he lived and no one was ever found. The following summer, he collapsed and passed away. The official verdict stated that it was either accidental or suicide due to an overdose of alcohol and prescription painkillers, but some people still think it was murder. Since Ogle's innovation was too risky for the massive profits made by the oil giants, and because many of his supporters believe he should have been fired along with the invention, we have carried on driving fuel and efficient cars ever since. Number 10. In the world of technology in the 1990s, apparently, back in 1995, an electronics engineer from the Netherlands by the name of Rome Jan Bernard Sloot invented something called the Salute Digital Coding System. This was a data sharing technique in which the inventor claimed to be able to store an entire digital movie file in just 8 kilobytes of data. The reason this was taken seriously was because it appeared to go against Shannon's source coding theorem, which defined the maximum capacity of data or information that can be sent over any medium or channel, in which the higher the SNR ratio and the greater the channel bandwidth, the higher the data rate regardless. Days before Slut was set to sell his invention in 1999, he unexpectedly passed away from a heart attack, the source code was never confirmed or ever found again, and the concept has never been replicated. Number 9. This appears to be an old-fashioned flamethrower, which makes it quite intriguing. Because they were always under siege, the Byzantine Empire had a few tricks up their sleeves to defend themselves. The so-called Greek fire was used with such power that its recipe was passed down from emperor to emperor until the fall of the empire in 1453. Its formula was kept under strict confidentiality. Regretfully, due to all of this clandestine work, we modern people have no understanding how the Byzantines created this extreme weapon at all. The Byzantine Empire's ability to survive for 700 years can be attributed in large part to their use of Greek fire, which was their most potent and dangerous weapon. Incendiary weapons were also evident at this time in history, with flaming pots and slamming arrows being two of the most popular tools of this war-hungry era. In summary, the Greek fire used by the Byzantines was not the weaker, inferior version that the Crusaders called Greek fire, rather, it was essentially similar to napalm used today. Greek fire appears to have been particularly effective at sea, where it was used to attack navy ships by being launched in clay pots or in the form of a kind of makeshift flamethrower. The general accounts of its use suggest that it would spontaneously catch fire and could not be put out with water. In fact, it would burn ever more vigorously when it came in contact with water and would firmly adhere itself to anything that it came close to. The way to defend against it seemed to be by soaking heavy cloth or leather in vinegar. Number 8. It turns out that inhaling any kind of toxic fumes is remarkably bad for one's lungs, especially if done on a regular basis. Who would have imagined such a thing during the 1950s? The tobacco industry has known for some decades how terrible smoking is for people's health, but despite spending some decades denying it all, they still seem to have been looking for a so-called safe cigarette solution to their pretty toxic problems. The palladium cigarette was developed by a tobacco company with the intention of a head of the research linking smoking to disease at that time. 
The idea was to add palladium nitrate to tobacco, which was supposed to lessen the toxicity of cigarette smoke without releasing palladium into the bloodstream. In theory, this would leave fewer chemicals that cause tumors in the smoke of these palladium-treated cigarettes by combusting the tobacco's byproducts. The company worked on the product until it was finished in 1978, but eventually stopped short of manufacturing because they were receiving threats from other tobacco companies. Number 7. The next invention is the Rife Machine, which was created in the 1930s. Although it made many promises, it may have contributed to people not receiving the treatment they required and dying as a result. Therefore, it is unlikely that this invention could have changed the world, at least not in a positive way. The idea behind the machine, which is largely unsubstantiated, suggests that bacteria or viruses, which are generally not the cause of cancerous tumors, emit electromagnetic frequencies. The machine, therefore, could produce low-energy radio waves that have the same frequency as the alleged microbes in the tumor. He claimed that putting this into the body would cause the microbes to degrade and die. It was completely unproven, and no one really believed the claims. However, in the 1980s, someone wrote an article about this ancient, discredited machine, sparking people's interest once more. The problem is that there is still no proof that it works, as some people have refused legitimate cancer treatments in favor of using this, and as a result, have died. Number 6. Hero Zeolopile is a straightforward radial steam turbine engine that is widely regarded as the earliest steam engine in history. Despite the fact that it was neither a practical source of power nor directly connected to the steam engines that drove the Industrial Revolution. The engine was introduced in the first century AD by the Greek Egyptian mathematician and engineer Hero of Alexandria. The system's historical applications are not entirely clear, but at the time it appears to have been considered a novelty and more of a whimsical object than a useful device. Number 5. Nuclear fusion, the reaction that occurs in hydrogen bombs and stars, is typically carried out at temperatures of tens of millions of degrees, but the theory of cold fusion suggests that this could be accomplished at room temperature. In 1989, a few scientists claimed to have achieved this, but they later claimed not to, and the whole controversy sort of vanished into history. However, it appears that a small group of scientists is now once again investigating this possibility, and this time they are funded by Google, so they might just have the resources to see it through. Number 4. One of the most well-known types of strong metals from the pre-industrial era is Damascus steel, which was primarily used to forge weapon blades. The process involved a covert method in which wrought iron was treated with various carbon-based materials before being hammered into exceptionally strong bars. It is distinguished by its extreme hardness and unique appearance, which gives it a streaky, watery look. To create extra strength, the steel bar is frequently doubled over repeatedly until the layers become entwined, and the metal is then worked to create the blade. Number 3. There have been numerous attempts to create a perpetual motion machine, but none of them have been successful for obvious reasons. The first type of perpetual motion machine uses the theory that it uses the energy from falling or turning, which is less than the energy required to return the device to its original position. Despite the fact that the mere idea of a machine that once in motion would continue forever with no additional energy requirements is an impossibility, it would actually violate the first and second laws of thermodynamics. People have tried to achieve it throughout history. However, this is false because the total energy of a system of this type is constant. These devices have been around since the 13th century, but they haven't managed to alter the laws of physics. Interestingly, another example of a so-called perpetual motion machine is a closed-cycle water mill, whose creator thought that the energy produced by water flowing over a mill wheel would be greater than the energy required to raise the water using an Archimedes screw. This was also incorrect because this type of machine breaks the second law of thermodynamics. The third type proposed that perpetual motion would be possible if it weren't for annoying obstacles like friction. The problem with this theory is that while these kinds of obstacles can be decreased, they can never be completely eliminated without the use of additional energy, so it still doesn't work. Number 2. The Iron Pillar is in the courtyard of a collapsed mosque, where it was originally built around 400 AD. It is supposedly located someplace close to the airport in Delhi, northern India, and it is said to have not a single speck of rust. Though Delhi's climate isn't particularly conducive to corrosion, people would expect a few more years' worth of effects to be visible by now. Instead, what we have is a mysterious six-ton pillar that has remained mysteriously rust-free for all these years. Number 1. 
The Archimedes heat ray is a device that was invented by Archimedes in ancient Greece. It was said to have burned Roman ships that were attacking during the Battle of Syracuse in 214 to 212 BC. It was thought to be made of a number of strategically placed mirrors that would reflect solar radiation and function as a parabolic reflector, allowing it to be directed towards the ships and set them on fire. However, there has been much discussion about the invention's accuracy because it is not mentioned in Archimedes' service works. Nevertheless, it would be tested in 1973 by a group of scientific geeks who pointed 70 copper-coated mirrors onto a plywood model of a Roman ship. As expected, the sunlight caused the boat to catch fire. Which of these bizarre inventions do you believe could have changed the course of history? Please share your thoughts in the comments, and also, check out the other videos that are currently displayed on the screen. Thanks for watching.